Good morning. How are we today? Friday already. Just lift that up a bit. level guys but you feel comfortable okay I'm gonna give you a high levels and low levels and it's up to you just to work where you feel the most comfortable you need to feel like you're being challenged but you shouldn't be in pain you shouldn't think oh that's really uncomfortable if that is the case then take it down a level if you've already gone up and if there isn't a level to go down to then you need to rest okay I'm really cautious today I've got to tell you this story about last night so I'm sat on my sofa and I see this thing crawl across the floor. Right, so I'm terrible with spiders and I absolutely hate them. So I said to my husband, quick, get it, get it. And it really moved really, really fast and he missed it. So I knew it was underneath my coffee table, which is about a foot away from my sofa. And I, for the rest of the evening, I'm sat there kind of one eye on the table, one eye on the TV, and it comes out again. So I said to my husband, quick, get it. Missed it again. And then my son came home and Carl, my husband said, oh, mum's stuck on the sofa, there's a spider in the lounge. So what's happened now is this spider, this unit here, it's gone underneath this unit last night. The worst part of spiders is when you, don't, when you know there's one, but you don't know where they are. So I'm going to be laying on the floor. If that spider appears, I am out that door, okay? Just so you know, just so you know, because it was ugly. That was looking at you. That was like, I am going to bite your toe. So yeah, so I'm in a little bit cautious mood today being down on the floor knowing that somewhere in my lounge, it wasn't massive, but it was quite an ugly spider, but it was, it was probably like about that big, I suppose. Yeah, and really fast. So shall we make a start? People keep, put, I keep on my Facebook page, all my friends keep putting these pictures of spiders that they've got in their house and I have to try and get it off my screen really, really quickly so that I don't have to look at it, I hate them. All right, so toes and knees point forwards, shoulders down relaxed. Make sure that you are balanced and central. So this time last year, we went on a meerkat and reptile experience, but I did hold tarantula. I was absolutely pricking it, and my son was rubbing my back the whole time, but I did manage to hold one for about two seconds, but that was it, oh dear. And it was still, it didn't move, it was just kind of, oh, horrible. So making sure you've got an even distribution of body weight across both of your feet, shoulders are down and relaxed. The meerkat experience is brilliant, by the way. You get in this little hut with these meerkats and they climb all over you. It was absolutely brilliant. And it was like, I think it was about 50 quid. It wasn't a lot of money and for, a, for an hour, I think it was for the four of us. So making sure you're balanced and central, you've got an even distribution of body weight across both of your feet, relax the shoulders, and find your neutral spine. We're tilting the pelvis forwards and backwards. We're finding the position where your back feels the most comfortable. I woke up this morning with horrendous back aches. So for me, my comfortable back, yeah, it's impossible today. So once you've got your neutral spine, your comfortable back, maintain it from this point on core muscles, the pelvic floor. So this is the muscle that you would use to stop mid flow. So imagine that that muscle is attached to a lift and I want you to draw it up from within as high as you can to floor 10. So it's fully engaged, you've drawn it up as far as you can, it's uncomfortable, it's unmaintainable. So you're gonna lower it down to the fifth floor and then down to the third floor and that's where you're gonna leave it. So you know you're holding it, some mild tension, but it isn't too uncomfortable. Then you can imagine you've got a belt around your middle with 10 notches, pulling that belt into notch number 10, coming out to notch five, out to notch three, and we're leaving it there. So again, we've created this tension around the middle of the body and we're maintaining it for as much as we can. So holding from the core, holding that neutral spine, your breathing comes from the rib cage, hands on the ribs, fingertips touch, Take a deep breath in and release. Deep breath in and 
and release. Lateral thoracic breathing and relax the arms. Just so you know, this week we've gone into the sports centres and I've done Pilates there uh, three times this week. And I had somebody who'd never ever done Pilates before. She came in the next day and said to me, my stomach muscles are killing me. So if ever you've wondered what laying on the floor holding your tummy up can do, that's what it does. It strengthens your core, it can give you tone and definition in your core, but strengthen the back as well. So it does work. People who've always thought Pilates was really easy, do it properly, it's not easy, it's a good workout. So, stand towards the back of your, uh, sorry, got to do your mobility, haven't we? So step out to the side, reach up and over, into the middle, and change sides. So every time we come back to the centre, we're resetting the posture, and then going again. Lengthening through the side of the body, through your waist, through your spine, lateral flexion, Last one here, and into the middle. Allow your hips to rotate one way, and the other way. Holding it in the middle, arms come up. Now you've got to keep your hips nice and still. So you're gonna breathe in, breathe out, rotate, breathe in, return. Breathe out, rotate, breathe in to return. Good. Breathe out, rotate, breathe in to return. So your hips are staying in place. You're mobilizing through the waist, through the spine. Last one to each side. Coming into the middle, relax the arms down. So I'd like you to take one foot forward. I just want you to tap the toe forwards and backwards. And then I want you to bring the foot from the floor so you're sweeping the leg forwards and back, then your knee comes up in front, and we'll take the leg back. Knee comes up, we'll take the leg back. Knee comes up, hold, and then you're gonna sweep and reach forward only as far as comfortable. Lift the knee up and balance. Sweep it back, reach through, only as far as comfortable for you. And then lift the knee, balance and hold, Ankle one way, the other, place the foot down. Other foot, we begin with the toe tap, forwards and backwards. We take the foot from the floor, begin to sweep the leg through. Knee comes up, leg goes back. Knee goes up, leg goes back. Good, taking it back, this time sweep and reach. If you need to keep your foot down, then just go from there, that is fine. Knee up and balance. Sweep and reach. Knee comes up, hold. Ankle one way, and the other way, and place it down. Standing towards the back of your mat. Breathe in, tuck the chin to your chest. Breathe out, begin to roll down through your back. Soften your knees. Allow the arms to hang and relax. When you're ready, carefully begin to roll back up. Rebuild the spine vertebrae by vertebrae. When you reach the top, relax the shoulders down, reset your posture. Breathe in, chin to the chest. Breathe out, gently roll down. Soften your knees, allow your arms to hang and relax. And then when you're ready, rolling back up, rebuilding your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. So when we roll down this time, we're gonna be coming down to the floor, okay? So chin in, breathe out, gently roll down. At your lowest point, walk your hands and your knees down into box position, core muscles up back nice and neutral, wrists, elbows under the shoulder so they're not too far forward, knees underneath those hips. Breathe in, as you breathe out, one leg pushes back, keep the hips in place. As you breathe in, draw it back in. Other leg, breathe out, push that leg away. Breathe in, draw it back in. So breathe out to lengthen, breathe in to return. Level two, breathe out to lengthen and raise. Breathe in to lower and draw it back.
back in. So you must make sure your leg comes down straight so the toe touches the floor before you drag the leg back in. Next option is to slide the opposite hand out along the floor, sliding it back in at the same time as the leg. Last option, opposite arm out. It can raise at the same time as that leg. Breathe out to lengthen with or without the lift. Breathe in to lower and return. Remember your level one, you're just pushing out and pulling in. Back remains flat and still, core muscles zipped up, pulled in and in place. All your breathing out to lengthen and then raise. I'm just going to ask you please for one more on each side. Try to do an even amount on each side as well please. And once you've done those two, you're going to carefully allow yourself to come down and we're going to come into our leg pull position. Looking down between the wrists, drawing up the pelvis for level one. Looking down, don't hang the head, keep the neck in line with the spine. Level two, lift those knees up. Level three, we're coming all the way up onto those hands. But we're making sure the body is in a straight line. We're not allowing the arms or the feet to come out wider than the body at your level. Deep, full breaths. I've been doing Pilates for a good 15 years, I think, and I still feel this exercise in level one because all my effort goes into pulling up my core, not worrying about my balance or what any other part of my body is doing. My sole focus is on my core muscles. So even a low level will work you. You've got to really feel like your belly button's being pulled up through your spine. I'm going to ask you please for two more breaths. And then you're going to gently allow yourself to lower all the way down. Hands in the small of the back as we come to our double leg kick. Legs together, point the toes, belly button drawn up. When you do this, your forehead will be down, okay? Breathe in, breathe out, lift both legs. Breathe in, breathe out, one, two, three. Breathe in to lengthen, but don't lower. Breathe out, one, two, three, breathe in. So we're working into the backs of the thighs, that's the hamstrings, and the bottoms, that's the glutes. Try and keep those legs together. You want to do one leg at a time, that is absolutely fine. Breathe out, one, two, three, breathe in. I'm going to ask you please, for one more in your double leg kick, then you're going to release those arms. Bringing them to capital E shape. And we're going to come into our swan dive, which is going to strengthen and mobilize the back. Legs are out. This time, touch your big toes together, drop the heels out so your bottom stays relaxed and your legs stay down. Capital E shape, elbows in line with the shoulders. Breathe in. Breathe out to peel the chest up. Breathe in to carefully lower, don't drop. Breathe out to peel up. Breathe in to gently release. Belly button drawn up. Breathe in full, deep breaths. Slow, controlled movements. You want to go further, you can hover the arms just above the floor. So if you're going for the next level, the arms hover just above the floor 
and they stay raised. Even when you lower the chest back down, those arms are still hovered, okay? I'm gonna ask you please, in your swan dive, strengthen mobility through your back and your core for two more breaths. Your breathing is full and deep. When you've completed your two, bring those arms back in and come back to that leg pull. Make sure the head and neck are in line with your spine. Don't pack the head or crank the neck up. Level one, knees down. Level two, knees up. Hold and breathe. Level three, all the way up, but remember, straight line with the body. And you've still got the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, all in a line. Don't allow your arms to come forwards. They've got to be underneath the shoulders, okay? So with your leg pull, at your level, I'm going to ask you please for three more, up to three more breaths. Once you've completed those three, you're going to gently lower and turn onto one side. When you turn onto your side, we're going to come all the way down, resting the head on the arm, looking straight ahead. Legs are in line with the body with your toes pulled away. Don't be tempted to look down your body, okay? Because as soon as you move the head to look down, you've lost your alignment, okay? So straight line, legs lengthened, hand there for support. Breathe in, as you breathe out, raise both legs up without rolling those hips forwards or backwards. Legs are lengthened, they are still in line with your body. Core muscles zipped up, pulled in, helping you to balance, okay? Top leg, breathe in. As you breathe out, kick forwards. As you breathe in, return. Breathe out, kick forwards. Breathe in, return. You could then also take that leg backwards and then back to the middle. So breathe out to kick forwards. Breathe in to return to the middle. Breathe out to kick backwards. Breathe in to return to the middle. If you don't need the hand there, take it away. Bottom leg is lifted and still. However, we can add that as well. So top leg goes one way, bottom leg goes the other way. And keep those legs as straight as you can. Breathe out to kick. Breathe in to return. Breathe out to kick. Breathe in to return. The range of movement is up to you. If you're kicking so far that your legs are bending, your hips are rolling, make the movement smaller, okay? Hand is there for balance. You don't need it. We make it harder by taking it away. And I'm going to ask you in your side kick, for two more breaths, when you've done your two, you can allow those legs to carefully lower. We're going to bend the bottom leg and tuck it under. Top leg is going to stay straight, but I want your toes pointing forwards this time. So the sole of your foot is facing the side of the room. Breathe in. As you breathe out, lift that leg. Now. It's very rare that we do a fast movement in Pilates, but this is one of those occasions. We need to complete as many rotations from one exhale as possible. So breathe in, as you breathe out, rotate. Try for five, breathe in and hold when you run out of breath, and then breathe out and go the other way. Breathe in and hold. Breathe out, rotate, mobilize the hip. So don't forget you're changing direction each time you stop. Circling from the hip, not from the ankle. Toes point forwards. Strengthen and mobilize round the hip. Keep the core muscles zipped up, pulled in. I'm going to ask you for one more set of circles in each direction. 
Then allow that leg to lower and give that hip a little rub. When you're ready, you're going to come up to seated position. Shoulders down and relaxed, legs bent. We're going to come into the teaser. So we're going to breathe in and tilt. We're tucking the, pel the um, tailbone under. We're going to lift one leg up, diagonally pointing away, knees in line with each other, and the arms come up parallel to the leg. Breathe in as you lower, and then breathe out to come all the way back up. Breathe in as you lower. Breathe out to come back up without moving the arms or the legs. The movement is coming through your spine and through your core. If you want the next level, both legs are raised. If it's too much, keep the feet down and just go breathe in and tilt back, breathe out and come back up. So that's your option, level one, just the arms, no leg, one leg at a time, both legs together. We're gonna do one more with this leg in place. Then we're gonna allow that leg to lower. When you're ready, breathe in, tilt, tuck the tailbone under, other leg out, knees parallel, arms parallel to the leg. Breathe in, tilt back, Breathe out, come back up. Try not to allow the arms or the leg to move around. Breathe in to tilt. Breathe out, come back up. Breathe in to tilt. Breathe out, to come back up. Core muscles zipped up, pulled in. Remember, you've got that double leg option, full teaser. If you want it, or the option of no leg, just those arms raised. Breathe in to tilt, breathe out to lift up. As you come up, you're lengthening your spine. As you breathe in and tilt, that tailbone tucks under. And I'm gonna ask you please for one more here. Then allow that foot to carefully lower. Good. So we're gonna do the rolling back. Feet are on the floor, you breathe in, tilt, roll, breathe out, come back up. So it's like a rocking chair, this is all mobility for your back. Breathe in, tilt and roll, breathe out, come back. And those legs remain at hips distance apart. Level two, feet hover just above the floor. Breathe in, tilt and roll, breathe out, come back up. Don't go so far that you're going to bang your head. And your next option, you cross the legs, you hold the feet, breathe in, tilt and roll, breathe out, come up. So if you're holding your feet, when you come up, don't let those legs back down, okay? Breathe in, tilt and roll, breathe out and come up. Woo! Core cool, muscles zipped up. Level one, feet come back down. Level two, they hover. Level three, they cross. And I'm gonna ask you, in your rolling back, for one more repetition, and then carefully lower all the way down. Once you're on the floor, so I just need to have a drink, bend your legs and place the feet flat down. Shoulders down and relaxed. Hips parallel, so imagine a place to spirit level across your hips, yeah? Bubble of air central and still. Core muscles are in place, breathe in. As you breathe out, lift one leg up into a right angle position. Don't allow the heel to drop because then you've lost the angle behind the knee. But also don't let that leg extend up because again, that angle is now too big. We want a nice right angle in the leg. Deep, full breaths, maintaining this position. If you want to go further, you can bring up the upper body, arms just above the floor, 
chin is off the chest, head is raised, breathe in, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, breathe in, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, if you want to go further, you can have both legs lifted, you're only going as far as comfortable for you, pushing down through those hands, now, if you have just got that one leg raised, you're gonna do two more for me. Then you're gonna allow the upper body to lower if you've got it up, replace the foot, and then when you're ready, if you've got both legs lifted, you just carry on, yeah? And then you're lifting the other leg up, and then starting again. Remember, you can just hold it here, breathe, you're working. Your core muscles are keeping that leg in place. So it's not just that you're laying in, looking at the ceiling, you are working. If you want to go further though, bring the upper body up, palms face the floor, breathe in, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five. And then if you're going all the way, both legs come up, make sure you've still got your comfortable spine. You should be able to touch your fingertips together underneath the small of the back. You could have both legs raised without the pulse. It's entirely up to you. The levels are there, you just have to find the one that suits you, where you can work effectively, okay? And I'm gonna ask everyone for three more breaths. And then if you've got both legs lifted, one foot at a time down, upper body down. So, that first leg that we used, bring it up to right angle. You're gonna breathe in. As you breathe out, you're gonna lengthen all the way out without moving the other knee. Breathe in, bring it in, and then breathe out and push the other leg out along the floor, and breathe in to bring that leg back in. So the leg that's lifted, breathe out, lengthen, breathe in, return. And then the leg that's on the floor, breathe out, lengthen, breathe in to return. So you're alternating between those legs, between the raised and the lowered leg. If you want to go a little bit further, you can bring up the upper body, chin is off the chest, breathe out as you take the leg away from you, and in when it comes back towards you. Core muscles zipped up, pulled in. Neutral spine in place. While one leg moves, the other leg remains nice and still. And I'm gonna ask you please, for one more with each leg. Keeping those legs still. Good. Allow that foot to lower, breathe in, breathe out, lift the other leg up. Good start positions please, yeah? Right angle behind the knee on the raised leg, and on the leg that's down, that knee is central. Breathe in, breathe out, lengthen the raised leg, breathe in to return. Breathe out, lengthen the foot that's on the floor, breathe in to return. So we're allowing the leg to be drawn away from your body. Imagine I've got hold of your toes and I'm pulling that leg away from you. But as one leg moves, the other leg remains nice and still. Breathe out to lengthen. Breathe in to return. The knee stays nice and still, and we're only lengthening it out as far as comfortable for you. Good. Remember, if you want to work a little bit further, upper body comes up. And I'm going to ask you, please, for one more of each move. Once you've done that, those legs are still. Upper body will come back down. 
replace the foot down and then if you want to take a nice long body stretch good and release when you're ready you're going to turn over onto your other side my son's not work at 12 o'clock i hope he remembers i did try and wake him up before i started but yeah head down on the arm lengthen the body out in a nice line from the fingers to the toes hips knees ankles all stacked breathe in as you breathe out both legs come up without rolling those hips forwards or backwards so the body is in a nice long line top leg breathe in breathe out kick it forwards breathe in to return so it only goes as far as comfortable for you without having to compromise your posture and then that leg is going to go behind you and come back in so you've got to kick forwards working through the waist and down the side of the leg and then a kick behind you try and keep that leg as straight as you can and then if you want to go further both legs move one goes forwards one goes backwards hand can always come away just be careful because when the leg goes behind there's the tendency to bend okay you've got to keep it nice and straight it might mean you need to make your movement smaller breathe out to kick breathe in to return and in your side kick please complete two more breaths then legs come together and we lower them down good top leg remains straight bottom leg tucks underneath I thought there was movement in my kitchen then you're going to point the toes forward so the sole of the foot faces the wall breathe in as you breathe out you lift that leg so we're coming into that rotation remember as many circles as you can from one single breath out Breathe in, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five. Breathe in and hold, breathe out, rotate. So the movement is coming from the top of the leg, through the hip, you're not moving the ankle or the knee, as many circles as you can achieve from that one single breath out. is there for balance if you don't need it you're taking it away I'm going to ask you please in your hip circle for one more set of circles in each direction please once you've completed those two you can allow the leg to lower he's in the shower that's good and then you can give that hip a little bit of a rub if you'd like to well done from here you're going to bring yourself round into a box position back nice and flat head and neck in line with the spine breathe in round the back it's a cat stretch breathe out to gently release Round the spine, breathe in, breathe out to release. Good. So, from here, please, you're going to push yourself back into a crouched position. So, we're going to be making our way to stand. Don't rush because I don't want you to feel dizzy. Hold on to something if you need to, okay? Tuck the chin in, place the feet flat, and then when you're ready, you're gently rolling up through the spine, rebuilding the back, vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way to the top, head and neck raise last, relax the shoulders down. So we've come back to this standing position that we started in. We're finding our neutral spine, we're maintaining it throughout the rest of the day. We're also trying to keep those core muscles engaged 
for as much of the day as you can remember. Lift up onto the toes and test your balance. And release, good. Lift up onto the toes and balance. And release. So we're just gonna lift up and then close your eyes and just see if you can balance as well as you thought. Good posture helps improve your balance. And release, well done. So that is your Pilates for this morning, okay? This afternoon at four o'clock we've got aerobics and it's the routine that we started on Monday. So it's on our page if you wanna have a quick look. Incidentally, that is the same routine that I've used at the sports center this week for the actual aerobic session, which was on Tuesday. Later on then at Witten tonight, we've got quarter past six, we've got our spin session on the bike. And then at quarter past seven, we've got body conditioning with a little touch of combat as requested, okay? So body condition, a bit of everything. It's worth giving it a go. I always give you options, the same as I do with Pilates. I always give you high and low impact options, okay guys? So if that's for today, if you don't make any of that, I will see you Monday at 10 for HIT. Have a lovely day, have a lovely weekend. It's gonna be a windy one. Take care, see you soon.